Hello today, and welcome to Does This Design Work? In this video series, me and my friend Brett plan to discuss what makes a character's design work. We plan on going through character designs from many different stories, and today we are going to look at designs from the visual novel known as Fate Stay Night. Fate Stay Night has some very interesting character designs due to its plot, because on one hand you have a group of human characters whose character designs are mostly based off the normal world, and on the other hand you have the servant characters, whose designs are interpretations of various historical and mythological figures. Now before we begin, I should say that what we say about these designs isn't the word of God. Art allows for multiple interpretations, and we are simply going to give ours in this video. With that said, let's take a look at our first design. Okay, let's take a look at our first design. And, you know, and of course we're starting with our main character, Mr. Shiro Emiya. Now, if you look at this design initially, this is the most generic thing on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. You have a shirt, you have jeans, you have shoes, you got those Nike shoes. But the shirt doesn't even have a design on it. It's just like the sleeves are a color and that's it. Yeah, and I own the sh I own the shirt. <laughs> I own this shirt, it's hanging up somewhere in my closet. The only thing that really stands out is um, uh, you know, his orange hair, but that's just like anime distinction yeah. hair. Yeah. Now, this, so yeah, this design is pretty generic, but here's the thing I like about it. The thing I like about this design is that Shiro is meant to kind of fool us, right? He's supposed to be a generic, nice guy who wants to save everyone, and this design sort of fools you with that initial appearance. And then later, when like... And then, you know, later we, of course, in the story, learn that he's not that. He's a bit, he's more of a deconstruction of that type of, of, uh, of that archetype. Yeah, trying to save everyone at the cost of your own life is not actually a healthy thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's what the novel talks about. So, yeah, with that in mind, I really like this design, because it kind of, because if it was anything elaborate or anything that hinted at, that sort of, I guess that, the more effed up side of this character, I wouldn't like it as much. So, yeah, that's what... <laughs> That's that design, let's take a look at the next design. Okay, so, going off of Shiro, we have Shiro's servant, Saber, who is King Arthur, but a woman. Yep. <laughs> so, let's talk about, so this is, I really like this design. What do you yeah, think about this, this design? This is a good, like, female knight design. Yeah, 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 and you know, like, whenever anyone's dressed up in armor, like in, like, silver armor in particular, I feel like that's meant to sort of convey the fact that they're, you know, a noble, loyal knight. Yeah. And I think as far as, like, her personality goes, you know, that's, you know, that definitely emphasizes that part of her personality. Yeah, the colors of, like, the silver along with the mostly blue with, like, yeah. some yellowish highlights on the, like, the, the edges of the dress. Yeah, I think they're meant to be golden and meant to be, like, you know, like, it's meant to be a consistent color palette with her sword, which also yeah. has, like, the same color palette as her outfit and her hair. Yeah. Like, her hair is not blonde, her hair is golden. We have another blonde character, and his blonde hair is going to look a little different than hers. Alright. Yeah. And, uh... I don't know, should we talk a bit more about the controversy of King Arthur being a woman? <laughs> okay, now. If you know anything about the Fate Stay Night universe, and the extended universe, like Fate, Extra, Apocrypha, that sort of thing, then a common thing is that some of the female characters are like male uh like in the in whatever whenever it's like history being told or a, a mythological story being told there are lost servants that end up being gender bended for the purpose of having more lady characters now that now if you don't like that idea you know that's that's fine there's a lot of reasons to not like that idea because sometimes when because, like, you, you could tell someone about, oh, there's this anime called Fate Stay Night, it has King Arthur in it, and then King Arthur is just, like... Like, she's a... Something about her is that she's a very short... She's one of the shortest characters, if not... Like, I think the only... I think there's only one other character that's shorter than Saber, but she's, like, a very short person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's like she looks like a little kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's short and tiny and adorable. And that's... And that's the way the... <laughs> The artist drew her as, and like to his, and that was in like in interviews. He talks about how he like really likes this design, and that's why there's that's like, why he reuses it a lot. Yeah, he reuses it. Like maybe I'll put it up here, like post editing. But there's like a lot, but there's like a there's saber faces, and I'm all like a John de Arc has a saber face. Like 
like pretty much anyone, any there's a bunch of servants, gender better or not, who end up with like that end up with like you know this face and this color hair. Yeah. Or sometimes a color like like you can like face where you can immediately tell oh it's based off this design right here. Yep. Yeah. Um, so what do you think of like the dress part of her design? Okay, I'll be honest. Most of the time, I don't like combat skirts and high heels. Yeah. I agree with you there. Because combat skirts are just asking for a wardrobe malfunction, and high heels are terrible even to just walk in to look fancy. Yeah, like, there's like there's a lot of, there's a lot of char- female character designs where they're combat ladies, but they have skirts and high heels. But, yeah, what do you think of it on Saber? I think this actually does work. Yeah. Because it has the armor plating on the sides. Yeah. And, you know, like... You and know, it, it's not high enough that it's, like, showing most of the legs. Yeah. And, you know, if you notice, she doesn't have high heels at all. She has armored boots that are appropriate for combat. Yep. Which is good. All right, with I think we said all that needs to be said, uh, let's go on to our next design. All right, here's our next... Okay, so I think it's important that we also briefly talk about just her casual design, because she's seen in this for a long period of the visual novel as well. Yeah, since most of it actually isn't combat. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is like... This is... Um, this is pretty much like normal day attire when it isn't just servants fighting servants. Yeah. Though I think, yeah, I think, like, one, you know, one of the good things about designs is, like, you know, how much they tell you about the character. I think this also, like, tells things about their character. Like, it still maintains the color palette of, you know, gold, a golden yellow, white and blue. Yeah. And, um, uh, I mean, I guess her shoes are a bit off, but, you know, that doesn't matter who would, like, I don't have silver shoes. I have brown shoes like and everyone else. most of the time when you're looking at the visual novel, it cuts off the feet. Oh, yeah. And a couple of the couple of designs I got here, they just didn't have feet. So like the pictures exactly. Again. Yep. So yeah. So yeah, the feet part of the design is not existent for a lot of these designs. And so yeah, this is this is a good design for the casual version of what we saw prior. Yeah, it's simplistic and it gets the point across, I guess. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So that's it. So we just got done with our first master servant pair. So let's take a look at. Um. Uh, let's take a look at Rinto Saka, who I think is the first other master that Shiro encounters in the visual novel, like in all roots. The, the first master, yes. Yeah, or at least as a master, because you know he meets like you know he meets Shinji and Ilya and uh, Kazuki all before she meets Ren. Yeah. But she's the first character that's introduced as a master to yes. Shiro. Yes. In fact, in the prologue of the visual novel, it's from her perspective. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she's a very important character. Um. So, there are a couple other characters that have this uh, uniform design, so it's not yeah. really important to Rin herself, and that's why I have a bunch of other designs we need to look at, because Rin actually changes outfits uh, a couple times in okay. all the routes. Um, so, yeah, but, you know, I think, to be honest, like, most school uniforms in any, like, anime setting all fall under the thing where the skirts, the skirts, the skirts the are skirt. like the skirts are in the like upper half of the thigh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because of that, like I feel like this is one of the most normal looking school uniforms I've ever seen. Yeah, it's very rare for them thing. to reach the the knees. Yeah, you know, I watch I once uh, watched this anime called Hibiki Euphonium where they had a scenes where like girls were like hiking up their skirts intentionally. And I always wondered, like, about that. Like, I guess it's a fashion thing or something. From what I've heard, like, actual school uniforms aren't that, like, high cut. Yeah. They're lower. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, uh... And, and, yeah, in the same anime, like, there's a... Like, the teacher walks up to those girls and is all like, Don't do that! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess one thing we can talk about her design right now are the twin tails. Yeah. Rin is, of course... Um, uh, that is her signature hairstyle. Yeah. And she's also, like, a lot of you may know that twin tails are often characteristic of a tsundere type character, and Rin is indeed that for, I don't know, whenever Shiro says something like, oh, but I really like you, Tosaka, she'll be all like Baka. Though, I remember, like, when I first saw her in the in the anime and visual novel, like, how she could actually be calm and, like, an exposition character for long periods of time. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, like, I feel like if, 
Like, something I like about the design, like, there's twin tails, but you can also see that there's, like, there's hair behind her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's, like... The only time where design is just twin tails is actually in the fighting game, because I imagine they just didn't want to animate long hair during the PS2 oh, era. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that her hair is also, like, she's a tsundere, but she's also, like, that's not all of what she is. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I like that a whole lot. So with that, now Rin has a couple other designs we need to look at, so let's take a look at those. Oh man, I made her thing too tall. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> so this is her, okay, so this is the outfit we normally see Rin in. This is her combat slash casual outfit. Um, okay, let's just get this out of the way. Yeah? The skirt. Like, look at that. That's insane. And that's just like barely an inch of coverage above like a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah. Now, I will say, I like the leggings, because I feel like she look a bit more, like, I, mean, I hate using this word. She'd look a bit more naked if she didn't have these. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but, there's that one, like, there's that, that yeah. three-inch patch of skin. <laughs> oh, man, we're talking about this more than I thought we would. <laughs> um, so some of you that may have seen the uh, anime may have seen the joke. Like, there's, like, the screenshot of Shiro and... And, uh, Saber in winter clothes, and they just put a bunch of dialogue on that screenshot, like, It's the winter, how does she say, stay so warm without that? And then I think Saber goes, There are some things in life that we just don't question, Shiro. Now, to be honest, like, this is a very iconic part of her design, but I don't really like it that much. Yeah. Like, I thought the reason initially was so that she could tap her legs really quickly, because there's some magic in her leggings, and that allows her to run and jump really fast. But... The first time she does that in the Unlimited Blade Works anime, she's in her school uniform. So oh, yeah. I don't think it matters that much. And I guess we haven't read the... Neither of us have read the visual novel, we should say. Yeah. We've seen mostly... Most of the stuff is just through animes and memes and stuff. Yeah. That's mostly it. And, yeah, with that in mind, like, I don't know if there's ever a point where she explains, like, the skirt must be this short, Shiro. It has to be. You have to deal with that. So, the second most striking thing is the red... Shirts. Yeah, like there's a cross red, symbol on there. Red is basically uh, Rin's color. Yeah, like it's ba it's basically the Tosaka family color because like uh, Tokiomi in Fate Zero, he has like a red like jacket that's part oh, of the yeah. suit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's I really like her motif of red because I'm uh, it also like yeah I just like it like I guess red and black. <laughs> yeah, red and black. Like you know those are her colors. Her hair is black. Like the colors are pretty consistent on her design. And um, uh, other than the skirt, like, the rest of it's fine. Yeah. So, with that, so, uh, yeah, do you need to say anything else? Because I want to Not go... really. All right. Let's go to the next design, then. Okay, so this, in my opinion, is Rin's best design, at least before, like... This is Rin's best design. This, this looks like a, like, they took the best parts of both uh, the school uniform and casual and put them together. Yeah, and, like, this is this is what, this is is how she meets Shiro. She has this, like, you know, kind of, like, pose, like, oh, what's up? Let me tell you about the world of magic, yo. Yeah. And <laughs> like, you can tell that her school uniform is underneath that, and then she's just wearing a red jacket. Like, I like that this outfit, more than anything, makes her look like... Because, okay, so you can't see this because I couldn't find the picture of it, but, like, the jacket goes all the way to her ankles... And, um, uh, like, there's this iconic uh, photo of her where she's sitting on top of a skyscraper, and she's carrying uh, Zelrich's knife, and she has, like, a book tucked in on her left arm. And I take a look at that, and I'm all like, she looks like a motherfucking magic person. She looks like a mage. Yeah. And that's why I like this design so much, because, like, just the combination of her, like, the long cloak with her school uniform and, like, how formal it all looks, like, it makes her look like... It make, like I, yeah, it, looks, it makes it look like a mage, and yeah, this is because of that. This is probably my favorite design of all time for Rin. But she only wears it for like a couple scenes. Yeah, she only wears it for most of the beginning. Um, so now Rin is of course a master, like everyone else, and she also has a servant. So let's take a look at him. So this is Archer. Yep, and I absolutely love this design. <laughs> do you, how do you feel about this design, Brett? Oh yeah, th this is a good design. This is one of the like, best designs in the entire visual novel. Now, it's interesting that he has the same color scheme as uh, Rin. 
red and black. Now, I think that that's also the purpose of it, but I also think the red is meant to symbolize uh, something else. And that is the fact that, like, like how many anime protagonists have you seen wearing red in, like, a coat or a, just a cloth form? Like, Edward Elric, you know, you got Dante from Devil May Cry, Alucard from Hellsing. You got uh, uh, Vash the Stampede. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carmen Sandiego, the best anime character. <laughs> Carmen Sandiego? I, I thought, does she wear a red jacket? Yes. Huh. Red jacket and hat. The best anime. Um... <laughs> Um, so I think, yeah, I think the, like, not only is this, like, you know, um, uh, the same, uh, mostly the same palette as her, uh, his master Rin, but I think the red is there because, like, we're talking about spoilers, and I've already spoiled a few things already. Yeah. So, yeah, Archer is Emiya from the future. Like, after he's used so much magic, like, it's, impl- like, the reason he has the, the darker skin is because, like, his skin has been, I taken some hits from using so much magic and the same thing goes with yeah, his, his hair his skin and hair has changed color because his magic has just affected his body so much yeah and um, uh, and you know Shira wants to become a hero of justice and this servant with the red color scheme red and black color scheme is kind of like that fully realized except he hates it yeah he hates it <laughs> and yeah that's why I think that that's why I think like the red is there for Rinto Saka for to beat for a Rintasaka, but it's also for him, uh, like, he's a hero. This is the fully realized hero wearing, you know, the red. The hero red. Yeah, I also feel that it also, when you the reveal is shown, it, like, contrasts with Shiro's, like, white and blue color scheme. Oh, I never thought of that. Which, now that I meant, now I think about it, Shiro also shares a sort of color scheme with Saber. Oh, he has, yeah, he has, like, uh, like, even though his design is generic, it's blue and white. Yeah, while Saber has, like, white, blue, silver, and a little gold. Wow, I never, I never thought of that. And we had a lot of time to prepare for this video, so. Um, I also like the, uh, like, I like the way the belt buckles just look and the shoes, like, it's like combat gear. I guess so. I, I, when I look at those belts, I think anime, like, (laughs) Final Fantasy belts, like, everywhere. You should... I don't know if you've ever closely looked at any designs from uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, but the amount of fucking zippers on Sora, Donald, and Goofy. There are zippers on Donald's hat. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you can store, like, I don't know, duck feed in there. (laughs) Um, yeah, it's very weird. Also, like, so this is clearly meant to show off his pecs. Yeah. And they have these, like, I think I think I remember reading that these are actually, like, metal things that are part of armor. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm okay. not entirely sure on that, though. Don't I thought it was just that. a very tight shirt meant to show that he's ripped. Yeah, and I like that because, like, a lot of superhero designs, like, you know, Superman, Batman, you know, they, they have their abs shown off pretty well. Yeah. And I think with the red, that also goes with the whole, like, realized hero type thing. Yeah, it's also interesting that, like, the sleeves don't connect to that red part uh, that's going down his legs. Yeah, it's all... Um, actually, like, so I couldn't find a visual novel picture of, like, uh, the back part of his design, but I actually have one from the fighting game that's designed by the same artist. So, um, uh, let's uh, go take a look at that if we're all done with the front of him. Alright, so yeah, the, both of the red parts are, like, connected with this uh, metal thing in the back. And, um, uh, yeah, it's very weird. And I thought about, okay, so it's not part of a jacket, which is very weird. Yeah, you'd think it'd be part of a jacket, but it's not. Now, here's the reason why I think it is. Like, I think the red here is because, you know, he's a hero. Yes, I have a cape or a jacket of some sort. Yes. Um, I think this is because it's meant to cover up his arms so that no one realizes way too quickly that he's Shiro using the same type of reinforcement magic to um, uh, create these two cool-looking swords over here. Oh, yeah. I, I guess you could say that, yeah. Yeah. Also, notice that his swords are uh, are colored opposites of each other. Where the white is, the black is on the other. Uh, you know, I've actually never thought about that, so... Like, is that meant to... Like, there's an obvious, like, yin-yang thing here. Yeah. I guess that's what, it, I guess that's what it's meant to portray. Like, I guess his duality, because sometimes he's working for the good guys, and sometimes he's not. Sometimes yeah. he's off doing his own uh, very yeah. specific errands. Um, fun fact about Fate Stay Night. All Archer class servants are fucking traitors by birth. <laughs> they have this ability called independent action, which 
which pretty much means they can go three days without being connected to the source of mana that is their master. So, yeah, so, so yeah, when you take that into consideration, the whole duality presented by the swords here is appropriate. All right, here's our next design, uh, Kirei Kotomine. Um, First off, you can tell this guy is a priest. Yep, you know, you got the long jacket, you have the cross, you know, if you add that to anyone, to any character design, and they're immediately, like, associated with some religious institute. Yep. In some way. Um, Kirei's actually not that devoted, as it turns out, though. Um, oh, no. I love just how, like, like, you have this, like, dark blue or indigo... And you know he have black all around without the jacket, and he has the and he has the long hair, and it's kind of hard to tell from here. I'm gonna zoom in a bit, but like his eyes, like he looks, he, his pupils are not as easy to see. Like he looks kind of shady. <laughs> he does not look trustworthy at yeah. all. Yeah, like just the fact that he looks like a priest by default, but he has all this other stuff makes him so like, like it makes you question it. Like it doesn't immediately make you go like, oh, he's a uh, he's. And a sadistic motherfucker. Initially, he's presented as the overseer of the Holy Grail War to make sure the rules are followed, but there's a lot more to him than... Than meets than, the eye. ...than initial appearances. Yeah. And, um, uh, so yeah, this design is very good at conveying, like, just... You don't want, like, it just conveys the fact that you don't want to trust this guy right away. And also, another thing, Kirei turns out later to be an actual master of the Holy Grail War. For Lancer. Yeah, so let's take a look at him. Alright, so this is Lancer, also known as Cucullin. Cucullin is from Irish mythology, and he is basically Irish Hercules. Yeah, pretty much. Um, wow, this is the design I thought the least about before I made this video, so what do you got? <laughs> okay, so first off, he is wearing a full, like, skin-type blue bodysuit. Yep. With these, like gray, silverish lines going all over. Yeah. The lines are most likely to make sure it's not just a complete blue all around, because yeah. that would just be boring. Oh yeah, that would look terrible. Um, so he's known as, like, the Hound, I think, in myths. The Hound of Kukulin, because he accidentally killed Kukulin's real dog. Uh, his own dog? Sorry? Uh, no, no, he's the Hound of Kukulin, because he killed this guy named Kukulin's actual dog, so he's all like, okay, I'll be your dog now until you find a new one. Huh. So he just took the name Kukulin as well? Yep, that's not his original name. I don't wow. know what it, what it is. That's uh, interesting. Um, okay, so um, Celtic warriors would often go into battle naked to intimidate their enemies. So, so that... it's possible that the whole blue bodysuit is also representing the blue paint they would also paint on themselves. Huh. That's actually, wow, that's really interesting. I never knew that. Now, the spear is interesting because it's a full red, like, all around. Yeah. But it's very ornately, like, designed, if you could zoom in on it. Uh, sure, give me a second. Uh, this part? <laughs> yeah. Alright, here we go. Like, it, you have the blade and then you have a few barbs coming off, and then those lines going around it kind of look like veins. I wonder, like, if that's, like, okay, so, like, uh, Kukulin's, like, noble phantasm, uh, historical figure superpower, is that he can throw his spear, and no matter what, unless you're very lucky, it will go, um, uh, it will hit your heart. It will rewrite causality to hit your heart. Yeah, like, there's this, like, there's that, like, image of, like, just a black screen with all those red lines going in a bunch of different places. That's usually meant to sort of display that effect. Like, it, like... You can't you like you can't physically block it unless you have a special power that allows you to. Yes, it will hit, but if you have a very high luck skill or have something to rewrite reality yourself, you can have it hit your shoulder or something. Yeah. So anyway, I wonder if the veins here are meant to like not only portray like just the weird angles that the spear will travel when it's like destroying causality, but also like the veins of like a heart veins connected to a heart. Yeah. Yeah. So another interesting note is his blue hair and red eyes. All right, uh, I'll move it up there. All right. Now, it's interesting to note that red eyes in the Nasuverse is usually associated with divinity of some sort. Oh, really? I never, I never knew that either. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it, in the background material. That's why some of the other characters coming up are going to have red eyes, other than the homunculi. Yeah. Huh. The blue hair, though, is a complete artistic liberty, most likely to go with his completely blue uh, color scheme. Yeah, yeah, be consistent with that. Um, man, I was unprepared for this design. I'm so embarrassed. I'm sorry, you guys, who's ever watching this. But, yeah, I think we've said quite a bit about this design. You want to move on to the next one? Sure. All right. Okay, now, first of all, this is a good way. We have uh, both Shiro and Shinji are characters that wear um, uh, the school uniform, and it looks pretty, like, generic, you know? It's basically the same color scheme with a few, like, lines on the edges and sleeves to yeah. give it some variety. Wow, even his shoes match. Um, yeah, and compared to the female uniform design, it's pretty, like, simple and generic. Yeah, it's not that interesting. Let's talk about Shinji. All right, so he we already talked like, about the uniforms. So let's zoom in on that smug motherfucking face. His face Look makes you want to punch him on sight. Yeah, and Shinji is one of the most evil, fucking selfish assholes of all time. Like, <laughs> he is he is a shit. Like his like his hair like just looks evil. I mean, look at the way yeah, it, it curls it's, and everything. It's like messy. Yeah, and it's blue, which is like kind of showing he's like connected to the Mato family. I'm not sure about that. Like the only time we saw like like we saw his dad briefly in uh, Fate Zero, and he had blue hair. But I don't know about Fate Stay Night. I don't know how blue really connects him to that. All right. Yeah. But yeah, he he just looks smug. Yeah. I don't think, like, I feel like there, I couldn't find it, but I feel like there has to be a thing where Shinji has some normal clothes at some point. Or maybe not, maybe he's in his uniform the entire time. Um, I think you mostly just fight him to, at the school. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, most of the fight scenes are at the school with him. Like, I think he, like, in Unlimited Blade Works, Heaven's Feel, and Fate, and, and the Fate Route, I think you fight him in the, there's always a fight scene in the school at some point. Yeah, so I think that is pretty much his only uniform that I know of. Yeah, his only set of clothes. So, yeah, anyway, um, it, it's a pretty straightforward design. So, uh, let's move on to who he is a master of. Um, okay, so Shinji is the master of Medusa, and also, who is known as Ryder for most of Fate's Day Night. Now, honestly, this is one of my favorite designs of the entire visual novel. Really? Yeah. And because, like, Okay, so we called her Medusa, but notice her hair. There's obviously no snakes. But um, uh, I think the snake part of her design is pretty much just the rest of her entire body. Like, um, uh, you have the purple and black. Yeah. And, like, you know, there, we have these rings, and I think these, like, little, like, indentations. Or I'll zoom in a bit. These indentations in the rings. I think they're meant to be, like, a snake eye or something like that. They do look like it. Yeah. And, like... Then you have the um, blindfold that kind of looks like it has, like, a yeah, scale pattern on it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, like, so her hair isn't snake-like, but the rest of her body is snake-like. Like, the colors are consistent. And if you ever see a snake in real life, you know, a lot of snakes have, like, rings that are a different color that are a part of their... Of their... Color... I, of their color scheme. I'm, try I'm trying to avoid saying design because snakes uh, are not character designs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so obviously, like, she's kind of a fan service -y character. Like, her dress is very low cut. Yeah, it's very hiked up. Uh, but, other but other than, like, I actually don't mind that. Like, I like, I don't know, I like that Ryder is a sexy lady. <laughs> it, it, it's pretty much the only, like, uh, female fan service -y costume in, uh, yeah. in Fate's Day Night. Yeah. That's, um, got, that's a real contrast to the rest of the Fate universe after this. Oh, oh god. Just look up Matahari on Google. Um, <laughs> um, I feel like the fan service is supposed to be a part of her myth in some form, but I don't know how. Um, Fate's Day Night takes a few liberties with the Medusa origins in this version. Yeah. No, I don't like, know. What. Like the reason she wears that blindfold is not because she's ugly and people turn to stone looking at her. It's that whatever she looks at turns to stone. Yeah. Unless there's like something blocking her vision, like glasses or a blindfold. You know. So even though she's not uh, an assassin's class, I will say that the colors, like 
do make her look like, you know, kind of an assassin. And she has, you know, she has like a chain with a spear on it, which is kind of a assassin's tool when you really think about it. Yeah. So like, so like it definitely like goes with the way she fights. Um, I guess the long hair, I guess I haven't talked about that that much, but I guess it's meant to be all like, she's Medusa with long hair, but not long snake hair. Yeah. And that's fine. Also, there's that tattoo on her forehead that kind of does look like a snake. Or... Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, like From a distance, anyway. Like, um, I guess, okay, so something, so uh, functionally, okay, this part right here, functionally. She has to, like, slit her, th she has to, like, cut herself in that area in order to activate her noble phantasm, yeah, uh, right? Yeah, slit her throat, so, yeah. uh, Pegasus will burst out. So, so, what, no matter how you feel about the cleavage here, like, you know, it's, it's appropriate, it, it works. It's part of her moveset, basically. <laughs> yeah. Her cleavage is a part of her moveset. Um. So, also, Ryder is the tallest female character yeah. In oh, Fate Stay Night. Oh man, I almost forgot. Yeah, I like that she's pretty much like one of the tallest characters. Because again, you know, she's a snake. She's slender and she's tall and that's what a snake looks like. But not the tallest. We're like, getting we're getting to that guy. Oh yeah, but yeah, like that's why I just love this design so much. Like it's so consistent with the whole snake motif and the colors are good. And um, uh, I don't know if the purple is meant to hint at who her actual master is. Well, considering we've seen the uh, color schemes match up between a lot of the masters and servants, I wouldn't be surprised. All right. Well, anyway, that's all we have to say about her. Let's go to the next design. I'm assuming at some point in the visual novel, we see this guy in the scene where he's just teaching class, or like Shiro's all like, hey, can you um, uh, stay after school to do a thing for me, Shiro, or Issei, or something like that? Yeah. Like, there's a couple in the anime, but, but it's most... Probably in the visual novel, too, just to establish that who this guy is before he's revealed to be a master. Oh, yeah. Like, a lot, like, I remember, like, I think I remember watching the, uh, Illuminated Blade Works with, uh, Danny, and he was all like, oh, he's a master, and he didn't really feel anything about that, because they barely established him in the beginning of that. Yeah, the, of all the masters, he shows up the least, because his servant is more important than he is. Yeah. Like, here's that, okay, so... I guess backstory aside, let's, like, this guy, you know, he looks like a teacher, for the most part. A but... very scary-looking teacher. And, yeah, and that's, like, the point, right? Because it turns out he's actually a very dangerous guy. And you can tell by just this expression, and maybe, like, you know, that sort of, like, you have dark greens here and black hair, you know. Well, you can tell that <laughs> he's kind of, he's kind of off, that teacher. <laughs> yeah, he looks very intimidating, and he should be. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's pretty much... I mean, it's a pretty simple design. I love how different he looks without his glasses on. Because with his glasses on, you know, he, he still looks kind of threatening, but he looks like a teacher. But with his glasses off, it's a whole lot more obvious as to what type of person he is. Yeah, he looks more like an assassin here. Yeah. Who's gonna beat you with his bare fists. Yep, and yeah, this I love this fight stance. Like, it portrays, like, you know... It portrays how bizarre his fighting style is, I think. And, uh... Yeah, that's pretty much, like, pretty much all that we wanted to see is this. So, uh, let's move on to, uh, who his servant is. Yeah, this is his master, uh, Castor, also known as Medea. Who's pretty much the brains of the whole group. Yeah. She's probably one of the more, she's one of the most tactical and mysterious characters in Fate Stay Night, and her design definitely, I think, betrays that pretty well. Yeah, her face is hidden under yeah. that hood, and she has that cloak around her. Yeah. She also has, like... Like, I don't know about the symbols themselves, like, what they mean individually, but I think they definitely portray that she is a magic user. Because magic yes. user is often seen with trinkets and, like, you know, ingredients for potions and stuff like that. Some jewelry, like a necklace or a ring with special properties or something. Yeah. And also, like, just the cloak... The way the cloak is, like, right here, it definitely conveys the fact that um, uh, she doesn't fight with her hands. No. Yeah, I don't know if there's any, anything else to say. Do you there's think there's a nice, like, purple, black, and gold color scheme going on. Oh, yeah, so, um, uh... So we've seen, like, um, uh... Servant designs have similar color schemes to their masters. Uh, something I like about Caster is that her color scheme is not really like her masters at all, because she had a different master before before Emma Kazuki, and she killed him. Yep. 
And also to lead into, like, a mystery of who is Caster's master. Yeah. Like, where, like where is she hiding out? I wonder if people thought it was, like, Sakura at some point. Because if you think about, like, so like parts of Sakura's design, like, it's... Like, I guess just the purple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she actually has a, a bit of blue hair here, and... And that's actually, that's actually a bit, like... That's a bit inconsistent with her color design, but I guess Ryder already had, you know, pink, purplish hair... And maybe that would be weird, you know, we need to distinguish these two characters. Yeah. But I think a really important part of her design, something we rarely see, is how her face looks. So we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna bring up a picture of that in a second. So I actually could not find a screenshot of the visual novel where her face was revealed. And I think there is one for when she dies in uh, Fates Tonight, like in uh, Kazuki's arms. Okay. But I couldn't find that one. Maybe if I looked harder, but... Actually, no, I found that one, but I, it, it didn't give us the best look at her face. All right. So, um, yeah, let's take, let's talk about her face a little bit. Um, she has the elf ears, which, you know, she's not human. She, and, you know, elf, and she's not human, but she's like a magical human. Kind yeah. Of. That's what, that's kind of uh, meant to portray. She, um, she's from the Age of Gods, where magic was only to people associated with gods. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, Medea is quite beautiful in the myth, and she has like... You know, she looks good, and she has that adorable little part of her hair braided, and yeah, she's pretty. Yeah. Also, her eyes match her hair, which is interesting. They're both, like, ice blue. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Maybe it's meant to portray some sort of, like, I'm a magical person type thing. Like, just the light blue. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway, that's I think that's all there is to say about that. Uh, let's go to our next design. So we're skipping right away to the next servant, known as Sasaki Kojiro, and he is Assassin. However, we skipped his master, and the reason that is is because Caster is Sasaki's master. Yep, she summons her own servant, and that means that he's technically a fake servant. Yeah, and that definitely goes into like his character, where he doesn't fight like an assassin at all. He can't sneak around, like he's bound to that gate for life. Yes. So yeah, that sucks. He's more of a swordsman. And that's a very long sword on his back. Oh, yeah. So, um... I don't know about this design. Like, I think he just kind of looks like... Like, I like the way the colors look on him, and I think it's kind of consistent with, you know, Caster herself, since, you know, servants, servants and masters, color design and all that. But other than that, like, he kind of just looks like a samurai. Oh, me. that is what he is. Yeah, and yeah, that's good, but I guess there's not really... I don't know, I just don't really, like, I don't really feel impressed by this design at all. Like, this design does its job for sure, but um, uh, it's not really anything unique, I, I don't think. Okay. So, I don't know, do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> um, not really much. Uh, I guess if there is one thing, his sword is pretty long. It's longer than most swords, and that is, like, yeah. part of this thing. But yeah, other than that, there's not really, I don't think there's really much going, going for this design. All right, so this is Ilias Veal von Einsburn. She's also one of the, she's one of the first characters we see along uh, in the visual novel, though, and she's also a character who's revealed to be a master pretty quickly, depending on the route you take. Um, actually, pretty much all of them start off after the church where they meet uh, her and Berserker. So in the Fate route, they meet her and Berserker. Yes. Oh, really? Yep. Huh. All three of them. I never knew, I guess I, man, I don't know anything about the fate route. Um, so I like, about, I like her white hair and red eyes because that hints at a sort of non-human quality since she's a homunculus. Yes. But I don't know about the rest of her design. Like, it just seems like, you know, just, hey, I'm a adorable little girl type thing. She's adorable. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's meant, I guess the light colors here are sort of meant to deceive you into thinking that she's a nice person, but she's not really a nice person, at least for most of... Most of the... At least for um, uh, two-thirds of routes. Yeah. So other than that, like, I don't know, I don't really get a lot out of this design. I think it's kind of just generic. It does get out, like, a noble kind of feel. Ah, I guess. Because um, it's kind of a fancy dress. Also, she's wearing kind of winterish boots. Yeah, and that's... To show that the Einsburn area is very cold. It's and never not winters. snowing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's never not snowing there. Um, so, but Ilya also has another design that I like a whole lot better. Oh, I, yeah, definitely. All right, so this design is a whole lot better than 
I- heard ignore it. the hulking giant in the background. Ignore that for a bit, but like, Ilya comes from a very cold place, and she has the hat, which I think is like a German or European winter hat type thing. I I'm not entirely sure. Her name's know. German, but it looks more Russian, like East East European sort well, of style. If anything, it conveys a whole lot more about where she's from than um, uh, than her other design. Yeah. Like, she has the boots in her other design, but nothing really... Not a lot of other things. And yeah, she's a little girl who comes from a cold place, but she's also not entirely human. And yeah, this entire... This portrays that pretty well. Like, the coat, scarf, and hat work together pretty well. Like, I mean, I guess if there's one thing, um, uh, the colors on the coat are kind of bland. Like, you know, you got, like, this area right here is the best part of her design, but below that is kind of, you know, it's very, it's very monotone. Yeah, they they add the buttons to, like, break the monotone, but it's not that much. Yeah, it doesn't do a good job of doing that. Doesn't do as good a job as it could have. So, um, uh, anyway, let's talk about the hulking giant pile of man muscle and destruction behind her. <sighs> Alright, what do we have to say about this? So, this is Berserker. Yeah. He is a big hulking mass of fucking destruction. He is covered with muscles, and he even look and they, they kind of make him a little, little grotesque, but that's just because he's so strong, and he's so powerful, and he's really hard to beat. So, a thing about Berserker class servants is they are super strong, but they are robbed of all their reasoning, making them just just crazed warriors who only rush. Yeah, like they are all offense, no defense warriors, and Berserker classes are known to actually kill their masters before they um, uh, even make any progress in the Holy Grail War, because that's just how nuts they are. So... Um, I guess other than the muscles, we got this kind of hinting at his Greek-slash-Roman origins. Yes. So, the identity of this servant is Hercules. Yeah. And, you know, Hercules was, of course, the strongest man ever. Strongest demigod ever? Uh, basically. He is the most famous Greek hero ever. Like... There's, there's, a, Disney, there's a Disney movie. Yeah, there's a fucking Disney movie. There's no Disney movie about a real hero like Perseus or um, uh, Odysseus. There's um, a Kukulin Disney movie. Is there? No. Oh, okay. Because I, I, I don't know enough about Disney to really have any confidence in that. So something I never really thought about is uh, what's going on with his arms here? It looks like a vein is popping out or something. It, it's like deformed it, looking. It looks more like stone or metal. Like, or his bones are just breaking out. Yeah. Or, like, or the bones are, like, growing out of his arms. It's probably a result of being a berserker. Yeah, like, berserkers always, like... There's a huge difference... Yeah, there's a huge difference between a berserker class servant and what they actually looked like before they were that class. And maybe that's what this is meant to portray as well, along with all the other grotesqueness about his muscle-boundness. Although Nasu has said that he would be the same height in all the other classes. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's cool. So imagine this giant hulking thing being an assassin. Is Berserker the tallest character in All of Fates Stay Night? Yes. Alright, yeah. And it's kind of hard to tell here because when, you know, I put these designs on this palette, I have to shrink them up so that we can see the entirety of them. But just judging from that picture with Ilya in front of him. Yeah, you can see how huge he is. Um, another part of his design that I never noticed until I'm, uh, I started setting up this video was um, uh, his eyes. We have one red eye, or just, I guess, his face in general, but we have one red eye and we have one yellow eye that looks a whole lot more sane than the other. It's probably a result of being a berserker. Yeah. But I also think it's meant to be, a, you know, another thing on uh, duality. Like, when he's with Ilya, you get this eye right here. But when he's with any other living organism, you get the other eye. <laughs> and he won't stop until it's ground into paste. Yeah. And, you know, of course, like, with, you know, in addition to the other grotesqueness, you know, you got veins popping out. Um, his hair is all frazzled, and I think it kind of makes him look like a lion, maybe? I'm not sure if that's intentional. Well, Hercules did kill a giant lion. Oh, really? Yeah, and he skinned it because its skin was impenetrable, so he just used it as armor. Wait a minute, how did he skin it if it's impenetrable? With its claws. He used the lion's own claws to skin it. I damn. 
You know, just like that Incredibles moment, you know, the only thing that can break its armor is itself. <laughs> Alright, so now we've gone over pretty much every single initial master and servant. Now let's go, um, uh, let's, I guess, let's call this section the, um, uh, exception section. <laughs> yeah. The exception to the rule section, even if Assassin is already a bit, in a, a bit of an, a bit of an exception. Excuse me. All right, now this is <laughs> this is the second archer, Gilgamesh. Yeah, so so in a in a in kind of a twist, it's revealed that a servant from the previous Holy Grail War survives to this day, and is technically the eighth servant in the fifth Holy Grail War. Yes. Yeah, and this is Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is kind of an asshole, and he's very full of himself. But, but he you, can back it up. He can back it up pretty hard. And other than his power and abilities, just look at this motherfucker. He is decked out in gold armor with, like, dark blue, like, contrasts. Looks more black to me, but sure. Um, also, he is also known as the King of Heroes, and, you know, he also has a red cloak, and maybe that's also meant to... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, he is the most ancient servant. Yeah. Therefore, he is the strongest servant, according to Fate's Day Night rules. Oh, really? The older they are, the strongest? Yes. That's why Matahari is so weak? Yes. Other than being... Other than the only thing be, her being famous for is, like, being good at getting information... Well, anyway. Um, I digress. Um, her, his hair is golden, and it might be hard to see from where you're at, viewer, but I'll zoom in a bit. And, um, uh, yeah, he has red eyes, and that's, like Brett said earlier, is meant to sort of, uh, like, like he's a divinity servant. Yes, he is two-thirds god, and, yeah, but he hates the gods, so his divinity is only a B rank. Oh, really? Yes. I never knew that. Man, there's a lot. Man, there's just so much. Fate Stay Night is a visual novel that has so much exposition for every single little aspect of it that there's always new things you can learn. Um, and yeah, I like that whole, uh, and yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, look at this, look at this guy who is like powerful and he's full of himself. Like, like this, this design is great. This is one of the best designs in the entire visual novel. It just screams, I'm better than you in every way. And other than like, and the design just looks good in general with the way they use all, like, the colors to like offset different parts of the armor. Like, it looks... It's fa it's a this is a fantastic design is what I'm saying. <laughs> now Gilgamesh actually has another design that's very prominent during I think Unlimited Blade Works, and maybe shows up a few times in the other routes, but I think it shows up the yeah. most during Unlimited Blade yeah, Works. Yeah, because Gilgamesh has the biggest role in Unlimited Blade Works. Yeah. So let's. Oh yeah, he does. So let's take a look at that. Like I like this, even though this design this design is not consistent color wise, but. I don't really think that matters that much, but because it portrays the same thing about this character, that he's yeah, full of himself. Yeah, it's a pretty fancy, like, jacket yeah. and suit. And, like, there's also the fact that, you know, he unbuttons it a little there, because he's all like, Yeah, I got pecs, I got pecs to show. <laughs> I'm super- I'm- I'm a sexy man, yeah. Um, <laughs> Gaze at my glory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that could- Oh, that could be interpreted multiple ways. Um- but yeah, this design portrays the same things, and it's like, what would what would the King of Heroes wear un casually? He wear a, a slick looking jacket, he unbutton his shirt a little, and like black pants. Like, yeah. So also, his hair is down as opposed to standing up. Yeah. Well, if his hair was up, and like, like imagine if his hair I, if his hair was up with that design. Like every other character you go, are you a fucking servant? <laughs> Like this, like that hair is down for incognito purposes. And, I suppose. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is Sakura Mato. She is the third heroine of uh, heroine of uh, of Fate State of the Fate State Night visual novel, and she is also secretly the master of Rider, since Shinji kind of takes it from her because he's an asshole. So uh, there's actually another picture I was planning to look at where she's wearing the uniform, but since we already talked about it with Rin a bunch, I decided that we should go to this because it, it obviously says a whole lot more about her character. Yeah. Than yeah, like just like Sakura is pro out of all the characters is probably the most pure-hearted, kind, and innocent yeah. out of every other character. And and her clothes like kind of show that because 
their bright colored. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their bright colored clothes, and you know, we have pink here, and that's like that's a good color for good people. Looks a lot more <laughs> feminine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, also, I really like the um, uh, the uh, hair band she has here because I think a lot of characters who are like super moe have that in their hair. Um, the purple. I don't know if the purple's if the color. Okay, so the significance of the purple hair is that she used to have black hair, and um, uh, and that's supposed to sort of hint at like her connection to uh, Rintosaka since she is her sister. But due to very dark magic, we will not go into here. <laughs> You can it, look it up yourself. It's dyed purple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, her hair changed due to what her backstory is. And I wonder if that's even ever touched upon in Fate's Day Night, because I never looked that up. Mm, I don't know. Well, if anything, like, it's a... Uh, you know, it's sort of like... Sakura's um, uh, master status is revealed last with a rider, and rider also has a purple color thing going on, and she has purple hair, so maybe that's why it's like that. Uh, possibly. And like, because it's like the only part of her design that would hint at that, maybe that, and it, it was revealed so late into the visual novel, like, I don't know, 20 hours in, like, you know, maybe that's what that per what per- maybe that's the purpose it serves. Only 20 hours? It has to be long. Like, I think I remember the Heaven's Feel walkthrough is like 10 hours long, maybe, or maybe longer than that. Like, Heaven's Feel is the longest, so maybe it's like 15 hours. Okay. I don't know, but yeah, we said everything we need to say about this part of our design. Now, Sakura takes up another form during her route, which we will look at in an instant. At some point, something really bad happens to Sakura, and that lets all of her fucking pent-up motions of anger and regret and sorrow come out, and then she takes on this form and, and becomes super fucking powerful that, as a master, she can just kill Gilgamesh. Damn. Um, so let's talk about this design a bit. Um, well, the, she has a dress now that's just all black with red lines going down. Yeah. And, that, and not only does that sort of, like, she's a dark character... But also, like, that, those are the colors of Angramanu, and that hints at her, and that's like, you know, and that, like, tells you about her connection with that servant. Yes. And um, also, like, man, I wonder if I should have gotten a picture for it, but the shadow in Heaven's Feel, it's the same color scheme as that. Yes. The, yeah, the shadow that just goes around, like, eating people. Yeah. Oh, man. So many bad things happen in Heaven's Feel. Um, so she's not wearing any shoes anymore, and her legs are... Like that. Um, and I guess that's meant to... This is meant to indicate, like, at her corruption. Because, yes. like, she, like... Like, because her emotions are, like, very real, but she's also being influenced to have those emotions. Yeah. And that... Uh, and this goes to, you know, portray that. Um, her hair is also white now, and I think red eyes? Yeah. Because we... In the previous picture, it didn't show her eye color, but her eyes are purple. I think... Normally. God, what? Her eyes are purple? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, her eyes were closed. Man, I wish I found a picture with her eyes open with that outfit. But, yeah, now, like, you know, white hair, red eyes, she's now edgelord evil form. Yes. This is Shin Sakura. Yeah, and... And, yeah, this is, and... The design is actually, when you take, like, just this section, it's actually pretty simplistic, but, you know, I think that's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a good design. Um, let's go to the next one. Look at this evil motherfucker. He, he looks like the most evil grandfather, like... So, okay, so the first time you see this guy, see this guy in Fate Stay Night, Heaven's Feel Route, he's all like, oh, thank you, Shio, for taking Sakura home. And you look at him, and you have to wonder, are you... You're not even trying to hide it, are you? You're you are old. you look like the emperor but worse. Like his eyes have reversed their colors if I'm looking correctly. Like the the white parts are black and his and his iris and pupils are white. How does anyone who's met this guy not call the police on him for looking the way he does? Like he looks sick and or evil and those are two reasons to call some 911s. Um but yeah, this guy is next to Shinji. Zoken Matao is also one of the most evil motherfuckers in the entire visual novel. And um, uh, yeah, this design definitely sells that point. 
Like even like the the color of his like clothes are like a sickly green. Yeah. With a like a black color. Yeah, like it's like it just like I guess. Yeah, like he just like he's a disgusting, evil old man. Um, man, his his um uh, cane looks like it's not the same resolution as the rest of his design. That's oh, weird. Yeah. Um, he even has an evil looking cane. Yeah, it's like it's a bent, it's a cane bent in a specific way. So I, he, like when he was ordering this cane, he was all like, "I want it to look like I want it to look old and dark and red, so that people know what's up with me." I want it to look as old and evil as I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, another part of his design, like he obviously looks like the oldest motherfucker in the world, and he is in fact revealed to be more than like. 300 years old, I think. I think so. Yeah, he's been alive for a while. And there's actually, like, there's actually a little flashback of, like, what he looked like with, uh, blue hair from all the way back then. And, yeah, and that, in comparison to this, is, like, there's such a contrast between the two. Like, this man clearly has many years ahead of him. Like, or he's, has, he's has just, have experienced many years, rather. He's just used magic to live so long, he just looks like that. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think we've said all, all that needs to be said. Let's take a look at um, uh, who this guy is a master of, and one of our many other exceptions for this Holy Grail War. So I was originally thinking of putting these two designs in separate things, but when I think about it, there's not really much to say about Cloak Tassan, and it's better to like just yeah talk about both of them. So this is True Assassin. Yeah. He's the servant that should have been summoned instead of Sasaki Kojiro. Yeah. Also, yeah, historically he's known as, like, Hassan Isaba, I think? Hassan Isaba, the Hassan old Isaba. man of the mountains. Yeah. Um, so, with the cloak, I love that he just looks like a fucking Grim Reaper. Yes. And he, he gets to work during Heaven's Field. He kills off some people, and he, he starts taking names and yeah. throwing down. Um, and in comparison, and yeah, so that's, you know, pretty simple design here. Um, this design right here, maybe I'll zoom in on it a bit. He looks far more oh, skeletal now. Yeah, he looks a whole lot more skeletal. Like, the mask looks like it's sewn to his face almost. It it's, is. Oh, it is? Yeah. That's fucking cool. And, like, you know, you know, Black is obviously associated with assassin-type characters. And he has, like, a cloak, and he has, like, a hidden thing. Yeah, and, his, his arm is just wrapped up in bandages. Like, not only is his skin... Like, not only is he wearing black, but he's also not wearing a lot, which is, you know, like, he's not a fighter, so he doesn't yes. wear a lot. Like, this design just looks really good, and I love how, like, grotesque it looks. Like, look at this arm. Look it at how weird that looks. It looks like this guy will kill you. Yeah, he looks like a... Like, he looks kind of like a monster, though not entirely, because... Well, I don't know. I, I wonder what he looks like without the mask, huh? <laughs> um, wow, I never noticed his feet. Yeah, his feet aren't that well does like, are kind of really simplistically drawn. Yeah. I don't know, maybe that's just because, like... You don't see the feet that often, and yeah. this is towards the end of the visual level. Yeah. One of the last designs, probably. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I guess I can see they're trying to make him maybe look gangly, but, like, they're so, like, like there's nothing going on here. Yeah, it's just so pointed. So uh, another part of Hassan's design that you don't usually see is what's under that bandage right there. Yes. So let's go and take a look at that. So what's underneath that? What's what's his arm look like? Put your guess in the comment section below. <laughs> so if I remember correctly, when I was looking for just Hassan with his arm unleashed, I couldn't find like pictures of uh, Fate Stay Night where it was. I think there was. I think the CGs in Fate's Night were, um, uh, were just the arm. Like, okay. you wouldn't ever see his body and arm in the same place. Alright. Um, and yeah, I couldn't find any picture with him and the arm, so... This is just from Fate Grand Order, the, yeah. uh, mobile game. And, um, uh, like, this design is good and consistent with Takeuchi's work, but I don't know if Takeuchi designed this version of, uh, Assassin. Like, it doesn't look like something he'd do. Um, I don't think he drew it. Yeah. But it's pretty faithful to the original design anyway, so yeah, this is the picture I ended up using. Yeah, so underneath those bandages is a very long arm. Yep. Which is, I believe, the arm of a demon that just folds itself in half to make it look like his arm is in a cast or something. Yeah, and like, it just like, it looks so fucking cool, dude. <laughs> 
like a glowing red arm that will yeah. like crush your heart. And like uh, attributing to its demonic quality, like you can see with his arm how it slowly goes to orange. Like that arm is not originally a part of him. Maybe yes. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had he had it implanted so he could become Hassani Saba. Yeah, and that like. It goes like it goes along with the rest of his, uh, with the other grotesque parts of his design, and like, yeah, it's I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> he crushes if if he gets within like I don't know thirty feet of you, he crushes your heart in that arm, and then he eats it. Yeah, and then he uses that to become smarter. <laughs> so anyway, let's get on to the next design. All right, so I'm uh. This is Edge Lord Saber. Yeah, at some point during the Heaven's Field route, uh, Hassan corners Saber like with uh, the shadow, and the shadow ends up corrupting Saber, creating Saber Alter. And um, uh, there's a lot going on in this design already. Just, just in the contrast between regular Saber and yeah. this. First of all, you got the blood, or even if that is blood, it might be just you know Angramanu stuff. Yeah. Like, there's red on her armor. Yeah. Everything's just colored black now, except for that piece of, like, olive green. Yeah, um, that was a different color before, I think. And, uh, you know, Zoken Mato, he also has, like, dark olive green. And I guess maybe that's a similar type of thing going on. Um, her gloves, they used to be just solid, you know, gauntlets, but now they have fucking spikes on them. Yes. Um, same thing with her shoes. They are now and... spikier and pointier. Actually, whether or not the red here is meant to be blood or corruption, I like that it can be interpreted both ways. That's really yes. cool. Um, her face. Um, her hair is now discolored. Zoom in. Oh yeah, I'll zoom in a bit. Her like her hair is now discolored. Her skin is pale. Her eyes look fucking evil. Um, yeah. And you can see with her face like she's being corrupted it's kind of a similar thing going on with sakura's yes. design now with her eyes what's interesting is according to nasu that's because she is now embracing her dragon traits oh really yes holy shit i never knew that i thought all of her additional powers were on the fucking angramanyu shit well that and also she's using more of her like dragon uh heritage so. sort of thing I imagine that makes her something like, you know, faster, stronger, better. Yes. And, like... Like, the best part about this design as a whole is just the sheer huge contrast from her original design. Yeah. The like, first one looked like a very, like, noble, good person. This just looks... Like... It's fucking evil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's why... Like, oh man, this is one of the better this is one of the best designs, and I think all of like the Heaven's Feel exclusive designs, actually. Alright, so <laughs> Heaven's Feel is a route that's meant to be the most dire of all of them. Yes. And characters are dying left and right. People are making alliances with the enemy because they need to survive. Yeah. It's not it becomes less about winning and more about surviving and saving the entire world. Though all of them end up about that at some point, Heaven's Feel, the saving the entire world thing, is, like, is there much earlier. Yes. Um, and I also, and also, um, uh, this is the route, like, okay, so so in Fate Route, you know, Shiro romances Saber. Yes. And Unlimited Blade Works, he romances Ren. And, um, uh, and in this route, he romances Sakura. She is a third heroine. And, um, uh, this... And this is a route where Shiro goes so far as to abandon his own ideals, the ideal which has defined his standing for living for, like, the last seven years of his life. He has to throw all of that away in order to save the one he loves, Sakura. And I think this design encapsulates that a lot, because look how, like, look at what happened to his arm. Look at the power he needs in order to save her. That's not even his arm. Yeah, it's Archer's arm. It archers him from the future, so it worked out. <laughs> yeah, he loses his arm, and Archer gives it to him. Yeah. And, like, this design is also sort of, like, he's partway there to becoming a hero, to becoming Archer. And, you know, he has the red thing. Like, this is not Archer's cloak at all. It's actually a completely separate thing made by Kirei to, like, make sure his arm doesn't, like, cause his brain to explode. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's he holding? He's holding Berserker's weapon. Like, um, this... <laughs> 
I feel like it's worth talking about this moment, because that's not his main weapon. He switches a bunch during Heaven's Field, but, like, this is, like... So, Berserker's weapon is nine lives. He used it, because he's Hercules, to kill the Hydra with it, since the Hydra has nine heads. Yeah, but Berserker cannot use that ability, like, he has a, and he has a special ability where he slices 1, 100 times in a second. But he can't use that because he's a Berserker and he doesn't have the mental capacity to do that. However, Shiro can do it nine times, not a hundred times. And like, yeah, that's what this picture is. It's a, an attack called Nine Lives Blade Works. And like, in order to perform this attack, Shiro had to like, pull off some shit and risk a lot of things. Like his own like brain cells and like his, the condition of his body. And like, just look at how intense he looks. Look at how like, he's using this arm. Like, just... Like, this image right here, like, even without the weapon, like, this is just, this is how far he is willing to go. And it's it's how far he has to go in order to save the one he loves. Yeah. And, like, just, like, I love this design. Now, uh, before we start this video, you point out that that arm is a little too long. Now that I think about it, though, Archer's an older version of him. Yes. So it would naturally be longer. Yeah. However, I looked at another picture later where it's, like, the same length, so I have no idea what Takuchi was actually going for. Though I like to think he was going for it being longer. And I'm like, you sent me that picture from the previous visual novel, Tsukihime, where, like, CL's arms are just weirdly, like, one's longer than the other, very yeah. obviously. Takuchi has definitely improved as an artist. Oh yeah, like, and like, Fate Stay Night had a bigger budget in general, and they had like an opening theme sung by a singer, and like, yeah, <laughs> if you compare any design from Tsukihime to Fate Stay Night, that's definitely apparent. But yeah, I like, <laughs> this is like, like this is, de like this design is meant to be different from our typical Shiro, and, a def and portray a different type of, a new motivation for his character. Yes. And yeah, it does an excellent job of doing that. And yeah, that's our last design for today. So, in conclusion, Fate Stay Night, the designs were much simpler than the Fate series eventually becomes. Yeah, like... Well, that's also, like, has to do with the fact that they got several more artists to do... Like, we were just talking about Grand Order. They had several different artists just put a good amount of time into, like, a single design. Yeah, but just contrasting also with some of the Fate Zero servants and masters. Yeah. Some of the Fate Extra servants and masters. Yeah. It definitely shows, like, how far the artist, um, uh, Take... Okay, so it's Takauchi, but what's his first name? I keep forgetting. Uh, Takeda Takauchi? Takeda Takauchi. All right, I'm going to put his name up there if we get that wrong. So yeah, this is, the guy who designed all these designs was Takeda Takeuchi, and he's a pretty good designer. And most of the designs in Fate Stay Night are pretty well done. So yeah, that's all we have for today, and um, uh, depending on how this video goes, we might see you next time looking at other designs. If you uh, want to see more videos similar to this, to this one, please like and subscribe. That's really It really helps. It's very encouraging. And let us know if you have any suggestions for stuff we can look at. Yeah, and with that said, um, uh, thank you for watching.